It was a Nigerian army, fought Boko Haram terrorists, loved his job as a military man, but somehow ends up in prison and now an ex-convict. It is very easy to get into Mazimon now security prison, but it's difficult to, to go to come out. I got there as a result in the, in the cost of my job, as a result of my job. There's no other, there's no other, it's, it's not that maybe I commit, I am not a criminal, I'm not, I did not commit in any way, but in the cost of my job, I found myself there. I'm a soldier, I'm a military personnel. I serve in Plateau State. 2013, we have a call to move to Meduguri in order to, to chase away those bad elements called Boko Haram. We're there with the battalion I went with. We moved from one place to another, chasing away the, the Boko Haram, fighting a lot of them. Many, many of my mates were killed. Many of my classmates were killed. Even myself, it is God on my side. So uh, there's a particular attack we were, we were supposed to go September 12. 2013. We went for the attack and uh, we lost 38 of our men in that very attack. So while we come where we come back from the attack, you know, the the the, the, the commander came. The, 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 the commander that was the brigade commander, the brigade commander came around to address us. So in the course of his address, they'll know. I asked him a question, and the question, uh, after his address, I raised up my hand, and he granted me permission to ask him my question. And I asked him a question, sir, what happened? Uh, those things that you promised that we should we'll go, and we'll go to the battlefront with, the weapon, the support weapon, the alpha jets, the alpha jets, the artillery guns that we'll go with, what happened that we did not see them? And you know, the man was giving a response. He said that, uh, you see, uh, it is the Air Force that failed him. It is the Air Force, the Air Force they used to fail him. And you know, soldiers already, they, they knew that uh, it is not true. How can the Air Force fail? So in the course of that, a soldier were angry. Some soldiers were shooting to the air from the, from the rear. Then he, he left the, the parade. He left. So after, remotely that, remotely that they came to call me, that what do I know about the incident that happened on uh, September 14th? And I wrote. So after a while, they came, they had, after a while, some issues happened in Meduguri town that they said some soldiers uh, shoot at the, at the GOC, at the commander. So they get those ones arrested. So I don't know what happened. After a while, the, our own uh, 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 battalion commander, before you know, they just push us, push us forward that uh, we also have a similar case like that. And uh, before you know, we're taken from one detention to another. We're, 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 we're detained in Meduguri for like eight months. After a while, we moved from uh, Meduguri to Kaduna. After a while, we moved from Kaduna to Abuja for court martial. That was when uh, Femi Falana came and stood for us. At the court martial, and the, the, the court martial was, was held. They gave the judgment. Uh, 24th December 2014, and we're giving death sentence. We're giving death sentence, and uh, after that, after the death sentence, we were moved from there to underground uh, uh, detention in Apapa, in Lagos here in Apapa. So we're there in uh, uh, 2016. They move us to Rikiri prison. And the journey into uncertainties began from being tossed to detention camps to finally landing into Kirikiri prison and the big pronouncement of sentencing. Death sentence, as law prescribed, was his reward. You know, while we are still waiting, you know, after the death sentence, judgment, pronunciation, you know, in the course of the judgment, there is a saying there, the, the, the court president said, he said this judgment is subject to confirmation. And you know, in the army, you know, there's something they call confirmation. So, you know, they will have to go, the legal department will have to, have to go and check the, the judgment. How was it? How heavy it is? Is it okay? Or that. So, in the cost of checking and all that, 
the confirmation came for death sentence uh, for 10 years imprisonment. So the death sentence was reversed, was cancelled. So it was now 10 years in imprisonment. So it was the 10 years imprisonment that the the her lawyer has to go and appeal. You know, in the cost of the case, though he appealed the death, the death sentence. Where they, they dra it was dragged to right left center, they checked it and they reversed it to 10 years imprisonment. And faced with fears, pain, and confusion on the home front, his wife and children are left with the impact. It all started 2013 when he left the house for Medjugorje for this um, Boko Haram issue. Well, then I was even pregnant for my baby, Divine, before he left. So, unfortunately, before leaving the house, then it was um, in Mali that they said they are going for, for a peace um, keeping operation. That was the plan before they left the barracks then. So, but later, we now heard that they now diverted their movement to Medjugorje. It was shocking then that, uh -uh. how come Mali to Medjugorje? Why did they change the whole thing? But unfortunately, when they now got to Medjugorje, for some months we now lost contact. So I was all alone with the children. So, before you know it, I will see some soldiers coming back home. And we ask, go for visit. <laughs> I don't like, I don't like remembering it. I will go for visit. I will ask, ah, what about my husband? I've not been hearing from him. What is keeping him or something like that? Some of them will keep it. They will not say anything. They will just say, Madam, just be praying. That Medjugorje is hot. So they just gave some of us parts to come home. I said, okay. Like that, like that, like that, until I gave back. We started writing letter. Like when we are in secondary school, doing boyfriend and girlfriend stuff. This letter will be using to communicate. When anybody come, I heard that somebody came from Medjugorje. I'll quickly carry by, by row and paper. I will write letter. Please, Oga, if you go, if you see my husband, let me give up. Say, I don't burn, no. We are okay. The baby is okay. All of us, we are fine. Before I will get reply for that letter, it, it may take four months or three months before I will get a reply. So we have been living our life like that. But after then, they said they are moving them to Abuja. They move them to Abuja. Before you know it, they said they should go and sentence them to death. I said, uh -uh. sentence to death. That December, it was not easy. Me and my children, my pastor, pastor, I went to him. I went to my pastor. I said, pastor, okay. He's the one that called my pastor. I said, my pastor should know how he will pass the message across to me that he don't know how he will tell me. My pastor now called me and told me that oh, this is what is going on, but we know that God is able to reverse any word spoken. And I said, Amen. I was in my pastor's place in Joss, Pastor Bayo. That was the place me and my children, we did our December. We were in his place. I stayed with him for almost two weeks before I now moved back to the barracks. So when they Say they sentenced them to death, they stopped paying our salary. There was no means of how to pay the children's school fees or how to feed. So Hannah said, okay, and Anna was not doing anything there because when my husband was around, he is not the type that will make you let you to stress. He won't. So I was at home. When I go to church, if anybody sees me then, I start telling them that they've stopped paying us salary. We have not been receiving salary for some months. Some self did not even believe. But we thank God that God has just been faithful by them. People we people around will help us. One of my husband's friends, 
Mr. De Flourish, now asks us to come down to Lagos. Since we don't have any family over there at just yeah, that we should come down to Lagos. So I was like, coming down to Lagos, how are we going to cope? What about my children's school? Who will help me with the school fees? My husband just said that I should just come. So we came down. The, when we came, I was going to his place. When the man, if he sees us in the church every week, he will be giving us 5,000 5, naira. Every week, he will give us 5,000. Whenever we go to a Bible study or faith clinic, he will give us 5,000 naira that week. So that's what we will use and feed ourselves, do whatever we want to do. He got us an apartment in Ekutu uh, there. We were staying there. The man really tried. He now enrolled my children to school. All of them, they are going to school. He's the one paying their school fees and paying the house rent. It was later, when we now start going to the church, that he also attend this abiding word, evangelical ministry. Our pastor there now said that ah, the place we are coming from to church that is far and we'll be crossing the express with the children that is not comfortable with it, with the wife. They now, that's how they now get us another apartment that we should be staying here. And all of them, they've been trying clothing, they will pack clothes for my children, they will give them everything, food, indomie, rice, red oil, granite oil, just name it. That's how they will be giving to us. They will ask us, are we okay? If there is there anything that we need, I should not be shy you. I should speak out. So at times I will not talk. At times I will meet, I will say to please ma, I need so so thing. Please, I need so. they will give me. And to the glory of God today. And when I came to Lagos, I was like to this I will just sit down and be looking. So and I decided to be making a pop-off and buns. So it's that pop-off and buns that I've also been using to support the children, to support ourselves. Every morning I will wake up, dress them for school, make my buns and take it to that. I took it to a pure water factory. I'll go and sell it there, egg grow, pop-off buns. I'll be making it my children's school. I go there too, I supply them some. They will say for us. But then there was a legal turnaround and Ayomide became a free man again. So by God's grace, our 30th of May 2019, the Court of Appeal discharged me and my and my casemate. Ah, that very fateful day, it's a in fact it's a wonderful day. I can't even forget it. That day I was in the bakery working from morning around four o'clock in the evening. One of my kids may just run to me, just run to me that, guess what? I said, what? That uh, uh, they are picked as dischargers. I was thinking it's a joke. So that was how it, it, it happens. Then uh, we find a way to get across to our lawyer, and our lawyer says the same thing, that truly the are picked at Abuja as discharged and acquit us. That fateful day when after servicing the th uh, Thursday evening, let me even say night, because I still went to a close by market to go and get flour. My flour is finished in the house, so I said, let me go and get flour. I came back that night. We were ready to sleep when I heard a knock on at, at the door. Who is that? Somebody now said, it's him. You, by this time, what do you want? It was like he's feeling hungry that his wife did not give him food. Who are you? He now said, ah. That is really hungry with me. I should come and open this door. And I said to her, be patient, I'm coming. So I said, we opened the door. And I said that I saw that um, Mr. Adi flourish back his car. He would rest on it. And I said, hope oh, no problem. He now said nothing that I should come. He wants to see me. I said, ah, by this time, around the after 11 to 12, by this time, I said, ah, hey, just how she could see you. He said, no, there's no while that should come, they want to see me. So I'll just step like this and peep. Lo and behold, I just saw him by the fence. And I shouted, I was happy. People around, they came out, mother, wait to see how I was, and I know God that time. So I was so happy. I thank God that God brought him back. Now an ex-convict and a thankful one at that, he relieves the experience sharing what he learned while being incarcerated. I do thank God for passing through jail because there are a lot of things I learned while 
I am there. I don't think there is a, any university in the world that can learn what I learned there, or what I learned in the prison. I don't think there's any in university. There are a lot of things that I learned there. Number one, I learned how that, uh, you know, in this world you got to know how to manage very well. And you, you, it is only in that place you understand how to worship God very well, how to get close to God, how to praise God. It is only in that place you know how to praise God. And in that place you, you understand that while you are in a free world, there are things you take for granted that you don't, you don't supposed to take for, particularly for security aspect. But there are things many of us take for granted and the people take advantage of them. There are things we all need to, to put in place, put a measure of security and, you know, but due to maybe because we are not exposed to the criminals, we are not exposed to people who engage in this business, so we just take them for granted. But it's not really, it's not that, it's not easy. It is not easy. You know, sometimes uh, uh, they might want to come up to make fun of we the soldiers. Like you guys call yourself soldiers. And uh, yeah, yes, we, we know we. They will say they, they know that they are criminals. But we will call ourselves the soldier. But now the soldiers and criminals are in the same place. Sometimes you even want to ask them Gary. Sometimes you want to ask them rice. You want to ask them this. So uh, why are you why are you why are you still why are you still being faithful to the nine to the country? To me, I do tell them, despite the fact that the country has uh, at a time like this, brought me to a place like this. I want to believe that God has a purpose for it and that will not make me to say I am angry with the country or I am angry with, with the army, no. Though a freed man, the pains are still very vivid. When he was forced to leave his family and loved ones and the prison cell became a harbor. It's a big experience, it's a, it's a, it's a serious experience while I was away for at least six good years. You know, I left home January 13, 2013. My, my wife was pregnant of my, my baby called Divine. You know, you know that, was, that, was, that was how I left. Till now, I was since 2016 before, we, before I saw her. You understand? And now, all this while, it wasn't easy for her alone to take care of the children to pay the children's school fees and all that. Ah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a serious one. The emotion, the, the emotion then was, you know, I feel the pains. The pains was there. Sometimes at night, uh, I shed tears all alone. You know, nobody want to, nobody knows what you are passing through. You know, by five o'clock, you are locked. By, at, at worst, by 5.30, everybody is inside the cell. You know, I could not reach my family. You know, the children cannot get what they want to. They cannot go to school the way they ought to go. You know, I passed through a lot. They, they, I passed through a lot. But I thank God today that uh, the children are intact. Myself, I'm intact. I did not lose my eyes. I did not lose my, I did not lost any part of my body. I meet my wife in good health. Every one of us who are in good health. You could say he should be an angry man. But no, he isn't. He says his experiences have taught him differently and he sees it all in a different light. I can never be angry with the Nigerian army. I, I was never, a, there was never a day I got angry with the Nigerian army because a lot of my mates are dead today. A lot of my mates are no more. Many of my cosmates that we went to that uh, uh, attack together, Kafia Forest, uh, a lot of attack, many of them are no more and some of them are disabled today. But today, here are my complete body. As he struggles to reintegrate himself back into society, he speaks to me about stigmatization of ex-convicts. The truth is that uh, if people knew about my story, you know, one thing that is, that is sure is the uh, issue of stigmatization. That is one thing that the inmates face when they are out. You understand? You know, the, the, the people don't want to the, the people in the society does, does not really want to relate with an, uh, an someone who's just come out of prison, and uh, an ex-convict, you know, people don't want to relate with you. The stigmatization is there. But in my case, people do not really know uh, much about it. And the little people that know about me are my church people. You know, those ones have been there for me. In fact, the house I am right now, they are the ones that rented the house for my wife. 
They are the ones that pay my children's school fees. In fact, they've done a lot for me. My immediate family, they try. My old mother try her best, you know, in the village. Most of the time, she, she comes from the village to visit me in the prison. Most of the time, you know, there are a lot of things. Even in the village, people said a lot of things. Ah, you know, that maybe he has went to rob. He has went to, you know, different kinds of names that, 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 that was what sent him to, to prison. You know, stigmatization, you know, like people said a lot of things. But it's few that I come to understand that it is not so. It is because these people were to go and fight and in the cost of the, in the, cost of the Boko Haram fight that lead them to, to prison and all that. So today, I thank God. Sandra is a legal practitioner and she weighs in on the legal aspect of the matter. There's really no, um, there is really no express law or express provisions about um, ex-convicts in Nigeria. But at the same time, there is no prohibition stating that ex-convicts cannot be given jobs or should not be reintegrated back into society. And this is because, I mean, the purpose of the criminal justice system is for reformation and, you know, restoration, reformation, restoration and reintegration back into the society. So there's really no law expressly de denying an ex-convict his basic um, human rights, which includes rights to um, employment and, you know, freedom from discrimination. I mean, he's entitled to that right as well. Apart from key offices in government, that includes like the contesting elections for the presidency, the vice presidency, and some other very key offices in, you know, in politics, there is no law expressly prohibiting an ex-convict from um, contesting those elections or, you know, holding public offices, holding certain public offices and, you know, even in private spaces. But the truth is that there is also, there's always that stigmatization that comes with being an ex-convict. It's the same way you're, um, an ex, the, the, you fill in a form for application for visa. There's always the provision, have you ever been convicted for any crime? And the truth is, when you, you click yes, or when you answer yes, you can always, you know, kiss that visa vis goodbye. The same thing applies to a job. Applying for a job and the question is asked you in your interview, have you ever been um, convicted of a crime? If you tell the truth, be rest assured that you won't get it because that's, the, that's like the perceived stigmatization that comes with you. No one wants to be associated with an ex-convict. That's why I believe that, you know, Nigeria, we have a long way to go in terms of restorative justice. It's high time we begin to see, um, you know, ex-convicts as part of us. If we're going to combat crime in the long run, we need to see these persons as part of us and find a way to reintegrate them back into the society and end all of the stigmatization associated with them. Well, now that he has regained his freedom, what is next for him moving forward? Presently, I'm praying to God that uh, the government will reinstate us back and uh, show us mercy. I'm praying to God. But, you know, when anything that has to do with government, it takes process. So before the, the, the calling back come around, so I'm, I'm seriously praying. On a daily basis, you see, I walk around trying seeking for a job, and particularly I'm trying to seek a job in the areas of uh, security because one thing I love doing is times of security. I love it. I, I love it. I like, I love committing something in my care and that thing is being secure. I've chosen to be a Nigerian soldier and we were told that a soldier is a soldier for, a, a soldier is always a soldier. Whether alive or not alive, a soldier is always a soldier. So out there, I'm still a soldier. And I know that as God lives, one day, God will show mercy. A turnaround will come. And a particular government we, we decide to, to hear from us and by God's grace will be compensated. Indeed, every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end.